Hello everybody, my name is Anthony Bionis, and this is another edition of Mission Start Podcast. Today with me, I have uh, Kaz from Run On Network. Hey everybody, how's it going? And that's about it. <laughs> it seems like we're having a common theme for these past two podcasts with just to be two people, but we have plenty of knowledge and expertise to spread around for ten people. Anyways, <laughs> um, so Kaz... Yep. It's been a while since you've been on my podcast. Um, how have you been? Um, been doing pretty good. This this past week, I had I kind of got a case of the flu, um, mm. but just 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 now getting over that. Um, I hear that. Had, so, had a <laughs> lot. Yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people that are like starting to get sick with the weather changing and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's been cold out there lately. Like last couple of days. Yeah, oh, man. It has been. <laughs> I've actually I used my heater for the first time in like a year. <laughs> um, other than that, though, um, just uh, having a lot of technical difficulties around here in my office. Um, the other day, I lost a bunch of stuff on a hard drive, and I went over to switch it to another computer, and um, somebody handed me a magnetized screwdriver. Oh. I didn't know it was magnetized, and that fried the other computer. Damn. So two two computers died, and then there's there's three. I have three other ones here, but they're like not the ones I would normally choose to you know, use for the stuff I do, so that just it just kind of sucks. And then the one I'm using right now is just it's just temporary for the next couple of days, so I can uh, get another one because it's like this really sucks. I had a lot of photography lost. Ooh, ouch. Yeah, yeah, it really really sucks. But um, I try to back everything up to Flickr. Uh, so my Flickr account's like really huge. I have tons of photos on there. But mm-hmm. the only thing is like the recent recent stuff i've had such a backlog that i haven't actually been able to get it all up yet mm. like 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 the last two events um luckily i've got a backup for one event but um i'm gonna have to try and find somebody who could recover some of the file i think it's i think it's recoverable but other than that um tech issues uh mm, sick and uh playing uh dishonored and oh uh, yeah a couple other games that are out right now uh, yeah, so um, there's really only one other thing that I've actually been up to besides uh, being sick, which isn't fun, and uh, tech problems. And uh, that would be I'm working on a story for a game that is currently uh, that's not really been released yet, or any information has been released yet on it. Um, and it's turning out to be really interesting. This is the first time I've talked about it in any kind of media, so this hasn't this hasn't been announced on RunnerNetwork.com yet. Um, but it's going to be a um, kind of an RPG slash visual novel for for Windows. Hmm. So uh, I I've heard I've heard you talk about it, and I was kind yeah. of I, I was kind of I looking you were actually looking for people people to help out with the game. Very yeah, that's the one thing that I mentioned was I was looking for uh, character designers. Very interesting. Um, first off, what uh, I mean, like, we're all gamers, and we all like to make games one day, but, like, what uh, exactly kind of inspired you to go into game development, or at least for this first game? Well, basically, I've I've had a um, ongoing set of original characters that I've, I've created for, for the last probably five to ten years, um, just in different games that I play, and uh, one of them it ended up being my mascot, uh, which is Reika Fujishima for Runner on Network. Mm-hmm. Um, she's the blue-haired one with the with the HK hairpin, and um, I have a buddy of mine, and he's he has another he has one of his own original characters, and we we were talking one day, and we were talking about the story that we just kind of came up with out of the blue, very very light synopsis, uh, nothing really heavy, and I kind of thought about it for for a moment, and I thought, man, that'd be really really interesting because it's kind of a different it's it's very different from what you'd, you'd really get in most visual novels and most RPGs and so what happened was I met up with a guy at Fanime uh, who works uh, scouting for uh, developers and for animation studios in Japan oh wow uh, looking for people with interesting ideas and I got to talk to him a bit um, privately um, in the Marriott and so he was telling me like oh yeah you should come up with some kind of idea and you know send it to me and see what you get so that gave me an idea at first to say like oh well I'll just go back home after the cons over write up a nice little synopsis and uh, maybe get a little bit of art or something like that I can send him but then then I kind of changed my mind um, um, because that was going more of the like pro- proposing to a animation studio route, other than like making it into some kind of like 
um, like point click adventure RPG for Windows. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know I didn't really know which route I was going to go with that. Um, and I've got some other people that are really interested in the project uh, for like the programming and stuff. The only thing I'm really really missing right now would pretty much it's pretty much artists. So if you know any artists or if like anybody's listening to this podcast and you're interested in getting in on a uh, project like this, um, just let me know, runaroundnetwork.com or Hikata Coach on Facebook. Uh, we're needing any any artist that's interested in drawing, like any kind of, um, just just your basic anime style art. There There is like a, a certain style we're going for, but um, it just really depends. It's A lot of it's up in the air right now, but we've got the plot and a lot of the characters. we got the world. Uh, everything's already like written down now, so we're heading towards like character development, and then after that, once we get some good concepts, um, I'm going in and mostly using my, my programming skills to make most of the game. Awesome, awesome. Um, <clears throat> what uh, engine are you using? Um, I am using, let's see, it's, let me get my notes over here on my desk. It's, <laughs> it's a really weird name. Mm. Hold on, let me see here. It's like a weird code name. It's, um, I, I, had, I had this problem the other day. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like XP twenty spy or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah, I've got two or three of them that I'm playing with right now. So, um, I'm gonna have all the information about the game and kind of what to expect uh, probably in the next week. I, I plan on releasing it last week. Mm -hmm. and at the end of the week, I get hit with the flu. So, <laughs> ah, I was like, sucks. I don't, I don't feel like like doing this because if I announce this, I'm gonna get a ton of questions and. We've got thousands of people that could pass by the site, so I just didn't feel like dealing with that last week. So, but it's going to be an, it's going to be announced uh, probably this week. Awesome! So. That sounds really uh, that sounds really cool. It's very interesting that um, as a website, not only are you doing what you're doing right now, but on top of that, you guys are making your own game, um, mm -hmm. which is really cool. I, I really respect that. Um, and you know, Thanks. one day I you know eventually yeah, when I get my skills ready up to par, I'll join the ranks of that. But, um, wow, that sounds, that sounds great. So anybody listening to this podcast that is an artist, uh, please hit my man up for, um, for helping out on this game. Um, so, um, but other than that, though, um, anything else? or? Uh... Um, that's, that's pretty much it, other than the, um, I announced the Sack Anime documentary movie. Uh, that we're working on. Ooh. I announced that uh, a week and a half ago, I think. Um, it's a small, um, it's a small production, but it's not like um, just like a YouTube video. It's it's going to be a it's like a full scale documentary that covers uh, the beginning of Sack Anime through to the end of the Radisson years. Ah. Uh, and we've got every bit of coverage that I've done uh, since then, and I've been I've been there since. 04 since the beginning right I've, we've got um a couple other photographers that are lending some stuff i was actually just getting ready to announce because a lot of people are starting to ask me about it. a lot of like people that go to psycho anime were like hey why didn't you ask me and i haven't got around to it yet <laughs> so i'm gonna i'm gonna make a big post saying like anyone that really wants to contribute to send me your stuff if you've got um it has to be a certain resolution uh which all that information will be on the site um but we're using like some really nice like editors, um, you know, like Final Cut Pro, and some really some this program Michael Bay used to make Transformers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little overkill for Sack Anime, but, but uh, it's gonna be it's gonna turn out really nice. And it's um it's I announced the date for mm -hmm. uh, will be December twenty fifth, um and it, it's kind of like a gift to the community. Um, because I love everybody in our community. Mm -hmm. It's such a, it, most of it is such a positive uh, community. Right. And it's also, I believe, like about two weeks roughly before the big uh, downtown Sacramento. Yes, Sacramento. yes, it, it so is. So it'll be kind of like a way to see the, the growing over the years, the evolution, and then go to the con two weeks later. Wow. Um, and it will be uh, 100 and, 120, yeah, 120-minute uh, video production. Wow. Man, look at you. Not only are you making a game, but you're also making a movie documentary. Mr. Uh, Mr. Entrepreneur, what's the word you're looking for? Um, uh, Renaissance man. There we go. <laughs> Renaissance, I like that. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. Um, I... All right, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I said, yeah, that's it, though. Okay. Yeah, I cannot wait for the documentary. I cannot wait for your game. Um, hopefully, things will go well for you. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
everybody that's listening to this podcast, be sure to check out Run and Roll Network for more updates on both the, these awesome stuff. Um, as for me, I may, I may not have anything big to announce, but what I've been up to lately, um, in the last podcast, I did talk about Dishonored in Artistic Alliance podcast, uh, which I played the first like hour or two. It's, it's still, it, it's great. I, 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 love, love, I love the game. And I love the, the setting and everything. Um, my only problem is that, as I said this before, it's hard to go stealth in that game. Because normally when you play a stealthy game, they have you in third person, like in Splinter Cell, or they, or like in um, uh, Thief in, even. Um, but like, since you're in first person, you kind of, you kind of lose that you know sensibility of what you can see around you i mean there is the point to where you have power where you can see through walls but uh it's it's really hard because you're in first person mode and you can't tell what you know how much uh, uh, of you is showing so uh but other than that i mean the game is great obviously there's a lot of influences in this game um you know mm-hmm. bioshock half-life um oh yeah yeah and sure. then, uh, yeah, I suggest if you guys have not checked it out, go check it out. Um, the funny thing is, is that, uh, what was it? Um, the, was the, the Bioshock Infinite trailer came out like a week ago or this past weekend. And, uh, it's funny how, um, people are comparing it to Dishonored, even though they've been doing it longer than, than they, than, uh, than they have. So, oh yeah, I've seen that. I, I I saw that. I saw like some of the people. They're like, oh, that looks like Dishonored. And like, it's, 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 no. <laughs> it's, it's it's funny because like you know it's it's still fresh in our minds. The game just came out like a week ago. Oh yeah. So it's just like oh wow, that looks like Dishonored. <laughs> so I mean I can you know I I can see why, but um this I can see why. Yeah, it's just funny how that worked. Aside from that though, um there was another game I played briefly, um but it's really it's really cool and it's really funny. Is um you heard of, uh, uh, an indie game called Retro City Rampage? Yes, I have. That game. Okay, first off, when I put that game on, that intro music is so awesome. <laughs> oh really? Yes. I haven't checked it out yet. Oh my god, the intro music just because it's it's born in and in, in put it shortly. Retro City Rampage is basically an independent game that was um that is a parody. Of video games over the years, and it's designed in a very 32 8-bit style. Um, think of like GTA, like combined with like all these uh, with all these missions, um, but they're like kind of mini games in, in, in this sort of way. And uh, your your uh, your your called player. <laughs> your 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 name is literally player. <laughs> it, your name is player <laughs> yes exactly and the wow. and the fine things when you start out the game like you um you help this guy uh who looks like exact like a pixelated version of the joker and you oh, and you go around the city and you uh you do these missions for him and uh at one point um i had like I, uh we were trying to escape but the traffic was like it was it was packed or like you know there were just like cars going back and forth so then he like he tells me to get out of the car and then use a uh, a power up and then i did and i became super fast so then i, I went across and then like i i turned on the um the light to, for everybody to stop uh, on the traffic light but it, they didn't stop so oh, the, no. so then the guy the guy was like all right fuck it you know he really didn't really <laughs> say it but like you know you know he just says just use the car and just crash into everybody and just like kind of made ways like all right let's go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the game is really cool. I I I, I want to play more of it. It's really yeah, it fun. Cool. Yes. Um, the only the only thing I, I, is kind of a problem to me is that because there's so much in this in this world and and then it's this is a top down view game. Um, and everything's pixelated. Is that when you're playing the game, everything in the in the city is kind of cramped together. So it kind of strain. It's kind of it's kind of a strain on your eye sometimes when you're playing the game, um, and you're like finding out, you know, or you're trying, you're trying to look, you know, who you're exactly shooting at, um, because it, you can get uh, lost within the uh, pixelation of the art. The art's art's awesome. Oh, the art's awesome, but it's just you know sometimes it would get to that point. Okay. But uh, it's really fun. Um, when I get more time, I'll play it and I'll let you guys know more about it. But um, yeah, like I t- highly suggest you go check it out. It's really awesome game uh independent guys you know to go support them um aside from that though i haven't been doing much obviously school has taken over my my life but um 
what was it? Uh, what I am what I am excited for next week, as, as I think for most every most every other gamer that has grew up playing games, is uh, the Wreck of Ralph movie, which oh yeah, yes, yes, I cannot yep. wait. Oh. It's gonna be fun. Mm-hmm, definitely, I man, yes, I have never been <laughs> excited for a movie in a long time since oh probably the Avengers. Um. Yeah, same here. Same here. Yeah, so Avengers was my last thing too. <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm really excited to go check it out. Um, you know, I'll let you guys know if anything. You'll probably hear my comments and in, in my my thoughts about on it on the Artistic Alliance podcast. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of what, I, what I've been up to, short and sweet, and just you know, doing my thing and, um, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, sweet. All right, so we're going to take a short break, and then we're, when we come back, we're going to talk about our memories of the past Epic Games um, in recent news. Uh, Cliffy B, or Cliff Blazinski, uh recently left Epic Games to pursue other goals or to kind of take a break from um, his time over at Epic Games for, for a long time. So, um, yeah, we'll talk more about that when we'll be right back. Hello everyone, this is Anthony Vianis from the Mission Star Podcast. And if you enjoy listening to this podcast, as well as our other ones on our website, um, you can now hear us on Stitcher. Um, you can now hear our show as well on the go with Stitcher Smart Radio, on-demand news, talk, and more on your mobile phone. The latest episodes are always available for you, no syncing needed, and no money or storage wasted. Available on your iPhone, iPad, Android phones, and beyond. Downloading is easy. Go to Stitcher.com or check out your app store. Stitcher, smart radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. And we're back. Um, so as I said in the last in the last segment at the end of it, Cliffy B uh, recently recently um, left uh, Epic Games a couple weeks ago. Um, and and like I said, he went to go pursue other goals, or just he went to go take a break, a long deserved break at that. Now. Of course, there's you know some big ramifications for him leaving the company, um, but we're going to talk about the kind of the past games he had a hand in that we played, um, and I'm going to date myself real, real quick. So, the first game that I played that Cliffy B made, and this is and this is going to sound make me feel old <laughs> when I, when, I, when I say this, um, was the uh, Jack Rabbit. Jazz uh, game that he made on the PC long ago, and I remember just fully because wow. I was playing this game on my uncle's computer, and I specifically remember putting in the DOS command to launch the game. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh man, that was forever ago. Oh dude. my god, yes. <laughs> um, I, you know, what's funny is like I played that game and I really enjoyed it. Um, and it was, it was like. It was like Song of the Hedgehog if, if you had a gun. And I, well, I'm not sure what you call it a gun, really. It looked like a toothpaste, but, um, <laughs> yeah, you're going around collecting items, and you're also, you know, shooting at enemies. Um, soundtrack was pretty okay, but, like, it was just kind of, it was, it was, uh, it was very fun at the time. Um. That's cool. But that's kind of the first game I played that Cliffy B ever ha- had a hand in, without even me knowing until it, years later. Um, was there, like, any games in the, in the past that you played that were, uh, because BB's uh, work was in? Um, I started out with... Um, sorry, I think... I think I'm going to say it was Unreal. Um, mm. Unreal Tournament, the, the first one. Mm-hmm. The first one in, in 99. Mm. Um, I think that was the first one. Because I, I, I've heard of Jazz Jackrabbit, but mm-hmm. I never, like, had it. My friend had it, and I played the... Um, I think I think there was, like, a like a holiday one or something I played. Mm-hmm. It was like Christmas one or something like ni- like like I don't know back in the nineties like ninety six or seven or something like that. But ninety nine, um, I played uh, Unreal Tournament one, um, and that one was like, it was really fun when I first played it. Oh, yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, what is this new like awesomeness? And then um, played that. Um, that's I think the first memory I can really think. When I think back, I'm like I'm like okay, I remember like three or four early games of, mm-hmm. of his, but Unreal. Um, there's another one. I'm trying to remember what it was. And, 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 to, talk, and to, to go back on Unreal, um, like that was during a time where was it Quake and Doom? Oh yeah, Doom was out. 
Like uh-huh. it was, it wasn't, it was in the era of like PC FPSs or something. Like yeah, that. I mean, like, they're still yeah. they're still prevalent today, but like back then, it was a huge deal. That uh, was like the renaissance of it all. It like, was, yeah. Yeah, that was like. <laughs> yeah, I do remember. Like, it was funny. It's like I do remember uh, playing that game, and specifically, um, I used to go to a boys and girls club for a long time, and mm-hmm. uh, they had computers there. And my computer at home wasn't anything as powerful. They had it there. <laughs> So I went on there and I installed Unreal Tournament, um, and ever since that day, Dang. like me and like a f- couple friends, will be always always be playing on that game and be going at it. It was it'd be, <laughs> it'd be the only one uh, thing going on in that room, and it was like it was it was a pretty awesome time. Not to mention like during, <gasps> excuse me, when when it came out, it was the best looking first person shooter game. Oh, it was, it was. Like compared like to hands the, down. Yes, compared to the other games at the time, man, mm-hmm. it looks so good. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, it was really fun. Like you know, it was very chaotic. You know, it was like you had all these special uh, weapons you can choose from: the flat cannon, the shock rifle, like all these awesome guns. And you had this huge map to go around. Um, just a curiosity: did, what map did you when you played Unreal Tournament when it first came out? What which map were you uh, constantly playing on? Mm, I had like two or three favorites actually um man you know what i've been playing like unreal tournament i've been playing unreal tournament 3 like off and on since it came out Mm -hmm. i like it's been out for like years it's been like since like 07 but um it's like before that i'm trying to i played number um was number two or was it four okay i played i know i played unreal tournament 2004 um and then there was another one that was like on the Xbox, the regular Xbox, and then there was one, um, the new, the, the recent, recent, most recent one, Unreal Tournament three. Before, before that, dude, I really don't remember that well. Right, right. Because I liked it a lot. I just remember, I remember number one. I remember like the title screen and like yeah. uh, different parts of the game because it was like really like iconic. But I don't remember a lot of the maps because I was like nine. <laughs> right, I hear ya. I have bad memory of childhood. Right. No. <laughs> Except for gaming, but yeah. that's like. An area I don't really remember that too well is which map, but I hear you. I I I definitely agree. I think to me, and, and there's been a few maps that stood out to my mind, but there's one map in spe- in particular that stood out to my mind every time I think of Unreal, is that you're in you're kind of in this like tall city, and you're going from platform to platform using these jump pads to to jump oh, around. Oh, I remember that one. I remember yes, that one. Yes, yes. That's yeah. every time I think of Unreal the original, that's the map I always think of. And oh, how, okay. Everybody was like be jumping around the entire time and like trying to shoot each other. And when it's like it takes like five minutes to get a shot, uh, get a shot correct. <laughs> that was the first one, right? Yes, the first Unreal. Yeah. Dude, now that you say that, I'm kind of remembering it, and it feels like so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> the, the early back in the heydays. It feels so long ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man. Um. Yeah. But um, past that, um. Like you said, the other Unreal games came out, and I think Unreal Tournament was actually the only game that Epic Games was making at that, at that time. Like I don't think it was making any other other games that I remembered um, before they went on to, to, to make Gears or to make um, you know live games that are on today. Mm-hmm. Um, but like yeah, like the other games I I remember you know in the past that Epic made was um, some of the more Unreal um, uh, games that they made um, like. Unreal, Unreal Championship 2004, when that came out, mm-hmm. that game, it was really good, and it was a huge deal when it came out. Like, it was a. Uh, oh yeah, it was a big deal. Yeah, cause like, like, cause like Epic Games, if there's one thing that they've been other known for is that their graphics are always good, and they've been. Oh yeah. Especially for PC, like their graphics have been just been top notch. It's the Unreal Engine. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I totally remember when that came out, like. People were playing the crap out of it. I tried to play it. My computer was chugging like a like a like a like a just chugging so badly. That's <laughs> same here, man. I had a crap computer. I was trying to play it anyway, though. <laughs> yeah, like I remember playing. What was that onslaught? Is it the mode they always had where like it was a combination yeah. of like vehicles and uh-huh. you can go around on foot if you wanted to. Onslaught. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Was, that was awesome. Yes, it was. Uh, it was kind of hard to 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 control the helicopter. <laughs> um but it was a lot of fun man i, I had a, a lot of enjoyment out of that um that one actually had two spacecraft 
uh, two. Yeah. Uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, one of the maps had like two different spacecraft on it. I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was there anything that particular that stood out to you when when you played two thousand four? Two thousand four. Um. Probably be probably the fact that it was like newer than the last one and it looked better mm-hmm. it looked really it really looked really sweet uh at like max graphics i had a friend down the street he was like one of the first people i met besides me that really liked unreal tournament and mm-hmm. he was running it with like max specs and it was like beautiful at the time and i think that was unreal the first was that the first unreal no that was unreal engine 2.5 yeah i think uh back in 04 but it looked just so good and i'm still playing like early ps2 games you know yeah seriously. Or like, or like really bad like p like really bad pc games on like a really bad pc so i hadn't seen anything like like that and it was just awesome and i had i had to get it and i had like a, a little graphics card uh it wasn't very good but i was i was playing it anyway and i got some fond memories playing that one with my, i think that one i think is the one i remember the most because um when i i've been playing unreal tournament 3 i've got it on uh ps3 and xbox and it's good but like there's not enough people that play it on console. Right, right. I think... Had, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, they had... I was going to say, they had um, Unreal Tournament hooked up at Fanime uh, this this year. Yeah. You know what's and funny? That was awesome. Yeah, you know what's funny? is like, I do remember... Was it, I think, back in... It was the first time with the Fanime. They had a PC uh, area set up. Um, a PC LAN uh, area set up. And it was a time where... Battlefield 2 came out and so did Unreal 2004, um, where people were playing on. Mm-hmm. And that was a lot of fun. I just hopped in and I played Unreal Tournament 2004. And everybody else that was, I was there. And uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I remember, I remember that. It was pretty cool. I kind of wish that Fanway bring, brings that back as far as like the PC LAN part. But uh, mm-hmm. that's for another podcast. <laughs> 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 um, what I was going to say, though... Uh, it was also when that game came out, like, two things that stood to my mind when Unreal 2004 came out was that the game, not only was it hectic as always, like the last game, um, it had these vehicles you can now traverse, mm-hmm. is that um, you, you had now a mic, like a, a headset you can plug in and talk to other people. Oh, because, yeah, right. Because right. it, it was, a, I think it was, I wouldn't say it was first of its kind, but like, at least for uh, a multiplayer shooter, it mm-hmm. was kind of the pre-Xbox Live to Xbox Live today. That's very true. That's very true. Mm-hmm. Like, it's... <laughs> it is the it is the, 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 metamorph- the metamorphosis of the 12-year-old kid screaming in your ear. Uh, <laughs> on, <laughs> it's the precursor to that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was... I mean, like, it was, it was very, very interesting. Like, we have never, ever heard of anything like it. Or, like, you know, we were, like, kind of... In this world, like man, is this, is this the internet? <laughs> oh, I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, cyberspace. Mm-hmm. That and <laughs> the other thing in the stats to me was like there were a ton of mods, um, used uh, using uh, the engine of Unreal 2004. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, one of which, um, what was it? The Red Orchestra. No, it was um, I think it was uh, Alien Swarm. Oh, Alien Swarm. Okay. Yeah, that I think was originally a mod for Unreal 2004. I might be wrong on that one, um, but I know for a fact that there were tons of mods that came out during that time uh, because of Unreal 2004. Oh, Alien Storm was a standalone game, huh? Um, uh, for... recently, yes. Um, but I'm not quite sure if it was like uh, if it was uh, modded by uh, long ago. Oh, long ago. Okay. Yeah, I know there were tons of mods that people made that were eventually became full fledged games today. Mm-hmm. Um, anything in particular? Because you said was it Red Orchestra? Um, I Red Orchestra was was one of one of the mods. Um, it was it was like based on something else, and then um, I think that's the only one I can remember. Uh, besides, I remember hearing about Alien Swarm though, but I guess that's that might be newer. Right, right. Uh, but that game, I I think the thing that really made that for me was the vehicles. Oh yes, definitely. I, yeah, I think it made it for everybody. I. Like, <laughs> hey, was there any particular favorite vehicle you had in that game? A vehicle, um, man, that's the hard. That's hard. Like there was, you know, the those those regular, um, those regular like four what was it like three or four or six? I got the ones from the recent uh, Unreal on my mind, so I'm trying to remember back 
um, if it was the the ones with the turrets that you get in like the regular maps, mm -hmm. or the um, I I really like the space ones. Um, those in the, on the assault map. Um, I don't know. I would get in a vehicle and then let's just like start gunning things down with the turrets. <laughs> and I I had like an addiction to the just just gunning things down with turrets for some reason back then. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's awesome. The vehicles definitely made it. Um, oh yeah, it those, definitely did. That one with the um. Those those weird like the energy beam that comes out mm -hmm. like on the sides like that one was that one was pretty sick too yeah the ones that go fast <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> um I, there's like only one vehicle in particular that comes to mind which is one of my favorite is I think it's called the Scorpion where you had a you had like a gun on top of your vehicle it was kind of like a buggy um uh, uh, the vehicle was kind of like a buggy and like you had like your main fire is your weapon on top, but like your alternate fire is you spread out these uh, kind of long uh, blades um, that were like if you ran over somebody, like you could cut off their head and it'd be a one hit kill. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I used to like try to like mow people down with it. <laughs> right. Yeah. It was it was so fun. Um, one problem is that you know they the uh, the blades can easily uh, get sh they get chipped off. Huh? Yeah, pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah, there's only downside to it, but it was a lot of fun though. <laughs> that was a lot, a lot of fun. Yeah, nothing like running from one of those things either. Hi, uh, yeah, no, really. <laughs> <laughs> you see one coming up real fast. Oh crap! Oh crap! Oh crap! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. So going for definitely very fun though. Yeah, going a bit further along. Um, th there was a one point like during Unreal's uh or at least Cliffy B's um uh career during Unreal is that. At one point, they had uh, a game series called Unreal Championships, which mm -hmm. is basically just the same thing as Unreal Tournament, um, except they had a kind of a more storyline base to it, and uh, it was also it was it was also they combined I think because like they were in they were uh, with um, Midway at the time, where like you know they were combining ideas to make this game. Yes, and. The, during the game, you can have the option of putting uh, the Midway Mortal Kombat announcer on if you wanted to. And during your uh, during the game, you can actually at one point you can actually do fatalities on 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 uh, on people. Oh, seriously? Yes, yes. Oh wow! Uh, I didn't know that. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. They, um, yeah, like it was a uh, it was a time where it was very interesting because like you go around shooting and you, there was even like one character you could unlock. Uh, Raiden from Mortal Kombat, and you can play as him in the game. And oh, wow. you can do a fatality on somebody um, if you get them up close or you have to stun them somehow around a mount, and then you do the button presses, and then you do the fatality. <laughs> it's um, Wow. It was very interesting. Um, that sounds like something I would want to play now. <laughs> <laughs> like like today. Like they need to remake that. Yeah. Um, that's the one I think I was mentioning earlier that I, that I had on the Xbox, but I didn't really play that one too deeply. That's probably why I didn't know about the awesome stuff. Right. It was, <laughs> it was very interesting. I think that was like their first attempt at a story as mm -hmm. far as like when it comes to that universe because um, I, during, before that, it was pretty much just pure multiplayer. There really wasn't no story to begin with. Yeah, it was just multiplayer game back back on uh, PC, mm -hmm. regular, the regular ones. And I want to say that it's like the first CG, you know, voice acted story they had in a while. Um, story mm -hmm. story was okay. You know, I, I can't remember exactly the entire details, but like you're just going through the tournament and you like you meet people that were from prior games. Like, you know, hey, it's that guy from, you know, the other game. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's nothing really too, too well done, but um, it was, uh, it was, it was. It was fun. I mean, like I had fun with playing the game. So, um, yeah, it, it was very interesting to say the least. Um, and had like they made two of them. I didn't play the first one. I haven't played the second one. So, um, let's see. Going further than that, I think we're getting into the, I think, Unreal Tournament three kind of era. Um, and like this is the time. Did, was Gears? Did, did Gears come out before Unreal Tournament uh, three? Actually, right after. Right, actually, right, right in the same the same year that they made Unreal Championship two, um, Cliffy worked on Brothers in Arms, uh, uh, really? Hill Thirty. Yeah, he he worked on that. Oh um, shit. With with Ubisoft, and then the the next year in 06 was when Gears of War came out. Ah, okay. 
Yeah, but Unreal Tournament 3 didn't come out till 07. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. You know, it's funny you mentioned Brother, Brothers in Arms. My brother played the shit out of that game. Yeah, same here. <laughs> like, 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 I would stand back and watch, and at the time, I wasn't really into it, but my brother was really into it. He loved it, just the, the strategy and into it, where mm -hmm. you kind of control where your, your, your men are going to be at, and then you switch to first person uh, shooter mode, and you would like go and do your first person uh, thing, like a, like a usual game. But it was very interesting to say the least. Um, yeah, that's the only one that I actually ever played from that from that series uh, was Road to Hill 30, but it was it was good. Like the the funny thing I always tell people about that one is is that game it had a, it had a lot of uh, had a lot of balls. I mean, like the very beginning of the game, it throws you in front of a tank. And then just is like, good luck, take care of the tank. <laughs> and you're like a regular guy in like, it's not, it's not, I wouldn't want to say modern times. It's like maybe like in the 60s or something like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's like, wow, like there we go in front of the tank. And it was hard too. You had to like really know your strategy. Mm -hmm. But they went from that to, or Cliffy went from that to Gears of War. And that's pretty impressive. Yeah, that is a huge jump. I remember. Huge. It was funny because like I remember. I was reading was a Game Informer when they were talking about uh, the, the next, you know, the next generation of games and what they're going to look like. And when I mm -hmm. saw those screenshots, I didn't I didn't know it was Gears at the time, <laughs> but like when I saw those screenshots, I was just like so impressed. I was just like I was just like, "Oh my god, this is going to look so sick when this comes out." <laughs> I I cannot I cannot tell you like how I was so excited. Wait. I was just like, oh. <laughs> I, I hear you, man. Like, I saw um, a thing about it, about Gears 1. Uh, I don't even think it had an, it really, I don't know if they announced the name yet at that time. They were just showing, like, oh, one of the first Xbox uh, 360 exclusive games coming out mm -hmm. um, this coming year. And it, this was like, in, this was like late 04, early 05. And like, the 360 hadn't been announced yet. and Or it hadn't been released yet. Sorry, it hadn't been released yet. Mm -hmm. And um, what really grabbed me was on g4 where they were showing that i saw um that they were working with a the unreal engine and then i was like oh crap the unreal engine is like in gears and then after that i was like seeing the um the lighting it was the lighting the fact that the lighting in um the current generation is like much like drastically different because they showed this one room on how much different the lighting was and i was just like this is gonna be insane <laughs> mm -hmm. and it was it was awesome and then it came out and it was like i like couldn't stop playing it definitely definitely i oh. i think at the time what, what was epic making that were they were they were they were working on their own uh in, uh, unreal engine for a long time but they, they didn't really mm -hmm. make it public for people to use until until gears come out or was it even I, prior to that um it might have you know i'm not sure i mean if 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 mods for like the earlier unreal ones use it then then maybe it was earlier than gears mm -hmm. i'm not 100 percent sure on that right right but i but from what i remember it was might have been around that time mm -hmm. it was six ish yeah it would sound like yeah. it but yes uh gears of war my god I, I would I would say I would say that is the game that I think not only did it influence a lot of other games to come out afterwards, mm -hmm. but it really showed kind of of a different take on it, what a third person shooter would be. Because prior yeah. to that, what we exactly we had prior to to, to Gears was like Siphon Filter. Um, we had Splinter Cell. It was Resident Evil. It was Resident Evil. Was it Resident Evil Four came out? Like before Gears? Yeah, Resident Evil yeah. 4 um, back in like oh four, I think. Yeah, I mean, I I, 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 I guess you can call it third person. I, I still I still consider that second person because like it's over his shoulder. Yeah, that's true. Um, but there was a ton of other games that came out that didn't have quite the uh what did, what they call what they call it today that the pop and uh lock feature or like you know when you when you go up to shoot but to somebody and then go behind the cover again. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, I forgot, actually. Yeah. It was this... Well, take that back. I won't say first, but it's kind, but actually, uh, take that back. Uh, it, was, it was another game that that, uh, that did it before. Um, fuck, I can't remember. It's like Kill... Uh, there's... Uh, oh, Kill Kill Switch? Yes. That was there's the first... Kill Switch, and then there was Bionic Commando, too. Yeah. Those were the first games to really do, uh, you know, cover-based games before mm -hmm. Gears did. But Gears just did it much more defined uh version of it and um 
it it blew everybody away when it came out. I think. Oh yeah. I think what and, and the funny funny thing is, if you get a game that makes you want to play it uh, through the game three or four, four times in different difficulties, <laughs> you've made a pretty damn good game. Because I did yeah. that. I did that with Gears. I played that game. Uh, um, most of its settings, I couldn't beat the last uh, difficulty setting. It was too hard. Oh, it's always hard. <laughs> Sanity. Gears. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Crazy. And not to mention, like the co-op in this game was so good. Mm-hmm. Like I think it was first of its kind to do online co-op. Of I'm, I might be mistaken on that one, but the uh, the co-op regardless in this game was really good. Um, <clears throat> w- was there any fond memories of playing Gears? Oh god. <laughs> uh too much. <laughs> There's too many. Um well, for Gears 1, it was um probably the the stupid berserker that oh, I got so yes. mad at that first time and like that berserker um then I figured it out, and then it went on, and then later on, there's, like, another Berserker, and I was like, oh, crap. But um, the the fact, just just the variety of weapons and the uniqueness of the world, uh, the story, the characters, the fact that they, that it was a brand new IP that's, like, never been, like, made before, anything like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, of course, there will always be, like, some similarities to other things uh, in media, but, like, it was very, very unique, and, like, it's still like unique, and um, that was Gears One was just like the birth of of of, the, of everything Gears. Like I mean, it's just I don't know. I think the um, the fact like the third person um, and the cover system, the weapons, um, the fact that you got so much satisfaction out of headshotting an enemy and hearing that horrible crushing sound when their head blows up mm-hmm. like and, and just a fountain of blood comes out like that was just so dude i love the long shot i, <laughs> I think that just made the long shot like my favorite weapon and then the um the quick active reload oh God, yeah i, I got so addicted to that i would do it like right on like like every single time mm-hmm. I'd, I'd have to do it i get mad. i'd see somebody else playing it and they weren't doing it and i'd be like no you have to hit it at the line <laughs> <laughs> if you don't hit it at the line like it's driving crazy like you have to hit it right at the line quick reload that way what are you doing i'd be doing that to people and stuff but i don't know um it's it's i've had a lot of a lot of really good memories mm-hmm. uh, over the years of gears one and the and the gears series that's followed right yeah like it was funny like, when, you, when you remind me the, the quick reload like that was like, something completely new that mm-hmm. i don't think many games had no, and like, that has ever been i've never seen that before yeah like that ever. it was funny because like i think it was like they were touting it before the game came out. Like you know, you have this mini game that you gotta play with, you know, with to reload, or else you won't get enough damage. Yeah. And like you know, this is like if you, if you get it right though, you get not only a faster reload, but you get extra damage. Like, oh yeah, that too. Yeah. Yep. So I was like, oh wow, that's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. So yeah, it was really it was a really uh, game changing event in the industry, um, and it really inspired more games kind of similar to it, or like you know, kind of taking ideas. Uh, from it, uh, and it was it really it, revolutionized that third person experience. It really did, really did. Um, let's see. And then after that, I think was it just was it just all gears like after that, or was it? Uh, no, actually, there's there's some other stuff. Um, for 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 Cliffy, um, specifically, he right after let's see, right after gears, um, he, well, of course, it was Unreal Tournament three, in oh seven the next year but then after that it kind of became a year by year so like 2008 was gears of war 2 2009 was shadow complex um and then there's there's just a list after that i see um i was just looking at my notes like he worked on he actually worked on fat princess and lost planet 2 no way really um yeah (laughs) yeah and those aren't those aren't epic games but he um um, well, those aren't from Epic Games. Uh, they are Epic, but they're not from Epic Games. Uh, and um, then, then he went back to like Bulletstorm, which is made by Epic Games, and then Gears of War three, mm. and then Judgment. Ah, uh, gotcha. Interesting. Um, I want to go back and talk about Under Tournament three when it came out. Uh-huh. Now, at the time when that game came out, um. We were it was 2007, right? Yeah, 07, 07. We were at a time where I think we were going away a little away from the multiplayer shooters. They weren't as popular it was then. Um, I remember, I I remember the game came out and that 
um, there was so much in that game you could do. It, it gave you so much freedom to kind of exactly how you wanted to kill somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, and like so many vehicles to traverse and everything and in, in, in context and on paper, it sounds awesome. But for some odd reason, I think it was because we were going away from that kind of type of game at the time, um, into more of a linear kind of, uh, more narrative story-based, uh, games at the time that it felt like a game that you could play, you have fun with, but it's like mindless. Like you don't have to really think much. Um, That's true. So I mean, I I played some of it. I didn't really play a lot of it. I actually still have it on my Steam account. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Yeah, but uh, tell me like fond memories from Unreal Tournament Three. Oh, Unreal Tournament Three. Um, I I I'm one of those people who actually played the crap out of this game. Um, I liked it a lot. Um, I of course like oh four and like the first one was like still it's still like legendary, but three they still did a really good job on three and um it was kind of different coming off of gears, going into back into run uh, you know getting used to gears style and then going back into Unreal Tournament, mm-hmm. um you know which is like the next Unreal game after gears and it's just like. Um, it was it took a little bit of getting used to because there was a lot of like third person shooters coming out, right? And right. Um, you know, just like you said, it was it, the games were changing, and uh, Unreal Tournament Three does have a storyline, um, although it's really simple, um, and still like the the gameplay is no different than the. It's just like an offline version of the multiplayer, so mm-hmm. there's not a lot of special things there, but but um it was it was kind of like you didn't need a computer if you have it on console you know like cuz i i've i've i played unreal 3 on console right, so it was right. kind of nice to um sit on the bed and play unreal tournament on my tv <laughs> um also the upgraded graphics um which you know at 07 it was like you know gears looked amazing so when this came out it was like still early the early part of the of the next gen so so it looked really good um Still looks good. Still looks good. Um, plays really fluid. Um, has these. It has. Uh, which type of map? I think capture the flag would be or vehicle. No, vehicle capture the flag. That's my personal favorite mode. Um, you have like a hoverboard. Oh yeah, that you're riding I around that. on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you have this um, this thing that you can latch onto vehicles with too to go faster. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's kind of fun, like because when you when you capture the actual flag, you have you can't be in a vehicle. You have to be on your hoverboard. Right. And if you get hit, it falls off, uh, which which is like a lot of games. Um, but it's it's kind of fun once you get the flag because you're like, oh crap, and you're like seeing around you, and there's like stuff flying at you, and you're you're you can kind of jump in a special way with it so uh-huh. it's kind of fun to just kind of hop your way like away with the flag <laughs> and um uh, un- uh vehicle catch the flags awesome uh like they have the standard deathmatch team deathmatch um warfare which is kind of like onslaught and assault mm-hmm. from the old series um and uh it's just it's really just unreal tournament in general it's like it's just the basic unreal tournament on the on the current consoles um, but I think I think my favorite memory would probably just be playing hundreds of hours of vehicle capture the flag <laughs> with <laughs> with friends back in 07. That was and then um, I took a break from it like around uh, around the end of 08 because I played it for like a year straight mm-hmm. um, and then took a break from it, picked it back up in like last year just for fun and uh, started playing it off and on a little bit because I, I I didn't have it on my PS3 so I wanted to get the trophies and um, I still like it I think it's decent I think more I think it's a little underrated um, but I know there's there's tons of other you know good multiplayer games out right now right definitely, um, definitely. but I wish there was a little bit more I wish they could have done a little bit more with three right yeah I, yeah I feel the same too <laughs> Oh, sorry, I feel the same too. But um, it's I think it it just came out of a time where, um, where people were starting to get tired of the f- the first person shooter multiplayer fit focus only games. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say 2007 was that the year. No, 2004 was when Halo 2 came out and Half Life 2 came out. Yeah. 2007 was there any? I can't remember exactly. Was there any uh, big Mass game? Effect? Oh yes, <laughs> Assassin's Creed. Yes, okay, yeah. I think was it 
I don't know if it was so seven or eight, but I think Dead Space one came out sometime. Oh around yeah, then. yeah. I think I think so. I think it was seven. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So there was a lot of like third person influence coming out mm-hmm. on that on that time. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Um. Now, as Clippy B as as a person, I mean, I we well, well I I've, I've seen him in person. I haven't really actually went up and, and talked to the guy. Um, mm. I actually went to uh, what was it? A couple of years ago, when I when I went to the game developer conference in San Francisco, I went to a panel where he was on. Mm-hmm. Um, he had really good advice as far as like you know how to get in the game industry because he's been in it, and like, I, like as a person, he's a really cool guy. Like he's, like he's um, it's funny. Like he works hard on his games, but like when he's like hanging out, he's like the most uh, I won't say goofiest guy, but like he will like um. He would be like go. He would like. I remember one time, like we were during a panel, like he's he's about to take a picture for Twitter. It's like, all, all right, everybody, flip me off. <laughs> he did. He take a picture of it. <laughs> was, oh, that's great. <laughs> so, like, he's um, not to gush on him, but like the guy, the guy is a pretty awesome, you know, guy to Sounds, hang around. Yeah, like he's down to earth and uh, one of those one of those people that are well known, but they're they're you know. Down to earth. Mm-hmm, definitely, I, I like that a lot. Yeah, I would definitely put him. As far as the type of people, I would like to put him up there with. I won't say like I won't say David De- David Jaffe, but like maybe like. Uh, well, maybe Todd Howard. Maybe, probably eh, maybe probably, because like, um, he's like you said, he's a real down to earth guy. He's um, you know, he 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 loves working on these games and, um. I, you know, after a while, I think like you know, after so many years of of him just working hard on his games and that everybody that everybody loves, uh, mm-hmm. I don't think there has been a game that he worked on that that uh that failed or you know or was not liked. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you know, kind of the reason why maybe he he left is because you know he's been working so hard for so many years. You know, that's what he said actually. Um, back on the third. Uh, I was just reading this this news article right here that I got from my notes. He uh, he pretty much said exactly what you, what you just said. He had been making games since he was a teenager, and he needed a break. That's, that was as he said. Mm-hmm. A long so, long deserved break. Twenty years. That's uh, man. That's twenty years and a lot of big titles. Yeah. Uh, you know, in those twenty years, that's. Yeah. If you if you were to tell me like this guy is gonna make the the, the next awesome. Uh, a uh, series of games that range from Unreal Tournament to Gears of War, I would have called you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he had a great he has a, he has a great career, and hopefully, mm-hmm. you know, a long uh, needed rest um, that he's gonna take, and um, you know, hopefully, he'll come back one day. And there are rumors already saying that when he comes back, uh, he'll do another Unreal uh, Tournament game. <laughs> So, well, you know what he's uh, – one of the things he's working on in the meantime is the Gears of War movie. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be, um, I think, like one of the directors or something. Oh, the executive producer. Yeah. yeah. He's an executive producer for the upcoming Gears of War movie, which keeps getting pushed back, but they're starting to move forward with it now, finally. Mm, makes sense. I mean, hopefully it will come out. I mean, we've been hearing about Middle Gear Solid movie for the longest time, and that's mm-hmm. kind of still – in the air, or like I, last I heard, like it's actually now I mean underway. So, yeah. But anyways, um, so over the past over the years that we that we've been playing uh mm-hmm. some of Cliffy B, Cliffy B's games, like was like overall looking back, like in your opinion, how how did it change the industry, or like how mm-hmm. how did it change you? Um. Let's see. We'll go with the industry first. Um, as far as the industry, I think that Cliffy B and um, Cliff Blazinski and his his games, uh, his involvement in in games, everything that this man has done um, has just been. He started off. I mean, just like just like most people do, started off with a few titles like maybe not everybody's heard of. I mean, one for instance would be uh, the Playboy Mansion video game. Oh, I totally remember that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when he called Goofy Balls <laughs> on that, <laughs> and uh, then he made um, the Palace of Deceit and uh, a couple other 
titles that you may not know of. But then, you know, like just like everybody, he made his way through, and then he he came up with these great ideas. Uh, was producer for for several great games that just got better and better and better. I think that um, just he really revolutionized. I think um, I know like a lot of people will say, oh, Halo is like a really good example of what revolutionized like. FPS gaming, or online gaming, or something like that, and that that may be true too. But I think I think um, starting with the big PC game boom of the like late '90s to the early 2000s, mm-hmm. uh, moving moving on to making making more titles that are more like based for consoles, um, he really is one of the people I'd say out of out of a, there's a handful of people, and he definitely deserves to be like in some kind of like Hall of Fame for creating. Um, just it's just a revolution. I, that's what I describe it as. It's a revolution uh, in third person view, uh, third person view games. Uh, the way he's he's made gears, like we talked about, how gears set the standard for for third persons. I, I believe because I mean I mean how many times have you played a game since Gears came out, since Gears One came out, and have said this is kind of like Gears a little bit. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I have. I have at least at least I can name five titles off the top of my head. Right. Right. Or like that, and I think that um, you know, you know, these developers are looking to other developers and saying, "Oh, we want to do what that guy did," or, or that guy just made, you know, twenty million bucks on that franchise. Let's do what that guy did, and there's they're doing that all the time. And um, but it's great, it's great because there's so much creativity coming out of this industry, mm-hmm. and um, I think he he's he could easily be ex- uh, described as a driving force for that kind of creative energy. Um, you know, in that in that specific those specific genres. As far as me, um, without Cliff Blazinski and um, Epic, I would have not. Um, I oh yeah, I didn't mention uh, we didn't mention Infinity Blade. On the oh, iPhone. it's right. Yeah, the first <laughs> uh, was it the first first iPhone game that cost ten bucks. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that yeah I know right. <laughs> um, no, for me though. Um, like I was gonna say, I wouldn't be playing um, incredibly high quality graphics on iPhone. That's for one thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but as far as like my life and experience with the Epic game series and Cliff Blazinski's game series, um, and all of his productions, um, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot I wouldn't experience. Um, I even have a friend that I met through Unreal Tournament 04 mm-hmm. that I wouldn't know like now if that didn't come out. Wow. Um, if the like we mentioned earlier, the um, the ability to plug in a mic uh, for an online game like that was that was kind of a new thing too. Mm-hmm. Build to in the game, right. and you know that that I wouldn't have uh, got familiar with that at that time. Um, and then Gears of War, like there's just a massive amount of memories with Gears of War series. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I know it's a it's kind of a smaller franchise, but I really enjoyed uh, Lost Planet, and that was that was really fun. I like Number Two a lot. Um, yeah, I think they did a lot better job with Number Two, especially with Capcom had a lot of like there's there's like a Killzone Three DLC for it on PS3, mm-hmm. and also they're like tie-ins, and it was just it was awesome. But no, um, just without without Cliffy B, I say for me it was just. There's a lot of things, a lot of things like that I wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have really experienced without the guy producing these great titles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that Cliffy B has such a great influence in the game industry, and that um, if you have if you have a game that comes out, and your people are saying like when other games come out that are similar to that, and they and they say like oh so it's like Gears of War or it's like a Gears clone. Then you mm-hmm. know you have, then you know you have a good game that you just created. <laughs> oh um, yeah. I would say that over the years that he did influence a lot of people um and not only did he revolutionize kind of what a first person shooter or third person shooter would be like, but he kind of um created this engine that everybody uses today, the Unreal engine that they've always mm-hmm. been touting and always been kind of you know saying like, you know, their engine is the best and it is. It's a it really, is. it's a really great, great engine. Um, so, and what was it? And not, not, not too long ago, they just released like a new video, kind of like their, their next engine they're, they're working on. Oh, Unreal Engine Four. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's it, they're always working on on like new tech um, games or engine wise, and um, mm-hmm. Cliffy B, he he has a hand hand in it. And um, uh, as far as like you know, I was, I was thinking about this. I just said it. 
as like the Hall of Fame. If it, if there was ever a Hall of Fame for video game developers, Cliffy B will be uh will probably be in it. Um, him and like the other big names will be in there too, like Gabe Newell and Peter oh, yeah. Peter Molyneux. Uh, oh yeah, oh, Sir, yeah. what's his name, Sir, Sir Garrett or Sir, I forgot his name. Mm-hmm. Um, the guy who made Ultima. Uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, I know. I forgot to. Yeah, um, I know what you're talking about though. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, <laughs> it's gonna happen. I'm gonna remember remember it after this podcast is over. <laughs> Something. Um, but yeah, like um, he really deserves a, a name up name up there, and I believe that after 20 years, he does deserve a long deserved rest. Um, and hopefully, you know, things are well, and hopefully, you know, has a, he has a a good life ahead of him. But um, yeah, I think that's gonna. That's gonna do do it for our memories of of Clippy B and kind of uh, how he influenced all of us in a way. Um, hey, you know, um, can I say something really quick? Mm-hmm. What I find really interesting, uh, I read this fact on it's 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 up on Wikipedia. Um, he, Blazinski, uh, until recently, um, he was on the Jace Hall show, uh, which he. Uh, it was a guest. He was a guest spot on, and they um, they did this thing with a machine gun on there. Mm-hmm. And he actually, this is this is a fact. He had absolutely um, no experience with a machine gun ever previously to when he was on that show. And he, and and if you haven't, if you notice, um, of course, of course, you know. And I know we've both been playing these games for years. His games always have like an extensive amount of like weapons. There's <laughs> always tons of. I mean, think about Gears. Think of Unreal. Like, and he's he's never had any experience with a machine gun. I I think that's like really interesting that he made all those like weapon designs and stuff. That's funny. That, 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 Until like that, recently. That, yeah, that, that's <laughs> very very interesting. <laughs> uh, but that's awesome though. That's pretty sick. Um, thank you, Cass, for joining me for his podcast. Yeah, uh, no problem. Enjoyed it. Had a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, where can they find you on the internet? Anyone can find me at www.runaroundnetwork.com. Um, that's where I do all of my main blogging, um, my articles, uh, updated uh, several times a week. Also, um, very easy to find on Twitter and Facebook by just simply searching Hikaru Kazushime or searching Run Around Network on either of them. Awesome. Um, and you can find this podcast as well as my works at www.missionstartpodcast.com where you can go check it out, our, our, web, our, web, our website, <laughs> um, tongue-tied, um, and uh, there you can find all our anime coverage, uh, video game reviews, convention fo- uh, footage, everything nerdy pretty much you can find on our <laughs> website, um, not to mention our social media sites. And um, yeah, this this podcast as well. You, if you want to follow me personally, I'm on Twitter at Defective Naruto, uh, where I just say random shit or I complain about school. So yeah, there's that. Anyways, um, so this is me. Uh, I mean, oh man, I'm totally out already. Um, this is Anthony Vianis signing off. Later's. Hang on a minute.